Yo, what's going on? You rocking with Joey Blaze, and you're now tuned in to DME TV. Way too much flex, not enough hustle. Things are working out. I got it off the muscle. Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle, but now they looking cause they never. Blaze, what's been going on, man? Not much, not much, man. Just always working, trying to stay busy. I see that, man. We finally get to catch up, man. Yeah, I Couple know. Of we'll be going back and forth for yeah. a while, man. So yeah, but hey, in. yeah, but you see, that's how the best interviews come about, man. Okay. You know, shit. Like, contact people, man. Tell everybody where you're from. Oh, but I say, born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina, Irmo to be exact. It's like a county on the south side. That's what many people know about it, so I just say Columbia a lot of times. Where, where? So, how was it growing up over in Irmo? You know what I'm saying? It definitely had its ups and downs, but the thing I like about it mostly brought the core values to me is like very family oriented. Taught me like the grind, the hustle. That's why I get my work ethic from. That's why I go so hard. It's just and the environment I put that in you. So I definitely appreciate Irma for that. Where, where? That's what's up, man. So coming out of Columbia, um, how have you seen the music, the music scene grow over, you know, the last three to five years? I've definitely seen him growing a lot from the time I started writing. I think Boss G was popping at the time. Like that's when, you know, say everybody was starting to pay attention. But every year I've seen like a new artist come out, so it's definitely in the right direction. Okay. We just need somebody to put that in it to open that door, then the rest will follow. It's definitely growing up. Okay, so who was like one of your favorite artists out of the, out of let's say Columbia area? Columbia out. area, I would definitely say I was rocking with Boss G a lot because I was DJ Ty. We was real like cool growing up, so he was okay. definitely like an influence as far as like the Columbia scene. So pay close attention to him. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So go ahead and tell the people, man. I, I know you got a new project. You're working on a new project. Tell us, gonna tell us about that project. Oh yeah, most definitely. Project I've been working on for quite some time now. It's called Time Flies. It's definitely. It'll actually be my first official project. It's real personal, real deep. I want to make sure I came correct the first time. It's personal. I put my whole life into this project. It has something for everybody on there. If you've been through something as far as losing somebody, as far as a relationship, family member, or job, or just being like homeless, like you definitely relate to this. It's something for everybody. So. Okay, okay. So you, you make that timeless music then? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I try to do every time I hit the booth, man. Okay, so let's let's talk about because we don't we don't talk about this enough. Let's talk about your process of when you picking beats or getting beats punched out. Take right. take me through the process. The process for me, um, I usually like I write a lot and mm -hmm. I don't try to necessarily try to mess the lyrics with the beat. But my beat selection, I really go with the vibe. I know um, I don't really pay attention to like the drums. Like it really don't have to be hard hand for me. Like I rather for you to feel my words. Than the actual beat, but I got good producers on my team to help me paint okay. that picture. So a hard beat never, never hurts. Okay, N name those producers for us. Oh, um, my three in-house producers: my man Jay Block, born and raised on um, Irmo with me. We've been tight for like since kindergarten. So him, um, my man Young Crip, he's um out of Chicago. He's done like a lot of um work as far as the drill scene. Then my man Black Assassin, he's in all uh, Durham, North Carolina. So. Those are kind of like my three go-to guys. They paint the sound for me. Okay, so you say you do a lot of writing. So you, do you take that hook and have them punch the beat out to it? Or, I mean, how, how does that yeah, work for um, you? Yeah, because before they even send me anything, I'll either call them or like FaceTime them and be like, yo, let me rap this verse to you. Mm -hmm. And then after um, that, they'll be like, I think I got the perfect thing. And then just kind of like mesh it together. If I need them to slow it down and speed it up, they'll just make it tailor fit for me. Okay. So I mean, what are what are what you expecting the people to take from this EP? Oh, just to feel the the pain, like the energy, because it's this is a roller coaster, man. It gets from like sad to happy, and then just like every emotion you can go through. It's like mm -hmm. after you done listening to the project, I just want you want them to feel like wow, that was amazing. Like it definitely has replay value in my opinion. So okay, that's gonna definitely be one of the better projects that's been on in a while. Okay, so uh, me, w w when do you plan on releasing the EP? Um, that's still up in the air. Okay. We're definitely aiming towards August. We're just waiting on some paperwork to get back. Um, first video for She Knows is coming out in the next couple of weeks. So okay. we're just trying to line all our ducks up so we can do it right. You know what I'm saying? 
Okay. First impression is everything with everybody. How, how many singles you gonna release from this project? Um, I'm, I'm aiming for three. I mean, like every track can be used as a single, but I definitely got three for sure. And then okay. after we get those three popping, that's where we gonna probably drop the full thing. Okay, that's that sounds like the magic number, man. Two and three. Yeah. I think a lot of people are dropping two or three singles and really pushing it. Um, what what what? How long are you, are you planning on pushing your first single? First single, I'm I'm aiming for like ninety days. Cause okay. Like, um, I'm trying to make sure it gets like everywhere. I don't want to just drop it. You know what I'm saying for like one week, don't get the response on one, then drop another. Yeah. One. I'm gonna definitely ride it out. You gonna ride it out, push it. Yeah, that's that's definitely the right thing to do, man. Ninety days is. From what you know, I've been told ninety days is is you know is that that number you definitely need to nothing less than ninety days. You know what I'm saying? Right, because the first rollout I had um back when I was just dropping joints like on SoundCloud, I would like post a song up, like tag everybody and get the response on one song, so I was like right. on to the next. Right. But if I would have stuck with it, maybe it would have got somewhere. So that's why I'm gonna just right. give it like three months. Right, right, right. Okay. So before your EP, what other projects have you released that? People can go back and check and look on. You at least um, any mixtapes? No, um, mostly just um, freestyles. Um, I know we got um, a single released last year, NBA. That's been getting good feedback. That's everywhere. Um, SoundCloud, iTunes, Tidal, Spotify, anything streaming, you can catch that on there. That's kind of like the promotional single we had at the time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's just freestyles. I did one like, I think like every Friday for like two months straight. So okay. all of those on my SoundCloud, okay. which is it's underscore Joey underscore Blaze. Just type that in, it'll be like the first one to come up. Okay. Now I know you say freestyle, you usually go up top or because I know that's people throw that that word around freestyle mm -hmm. and you know, I know coming up in the 80s, 90s, freestyle is like up top. Right. But I know a lot of people now they don't really most a lot of people like the writing that to me that's not no problem, but what's your take on it? You you, you think Yeah, because it, it definitely has two meanings to it. Um yeah. a couple of them was like straight off the top. Right. But I know um Another definition would just be like just writing on somebody else's beat, yeah. which is really not the proper term for like freestyle. But right. you could call it a cover, but I guess we just got so used to the term freestyle, just yeah. been rolling with that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, I have a couple covers on on SoundCloud that you can okay. check out. Okay, that's definitely that's what's up. So, as an indie artist, man, what has been like the toughest, the toughest of the or. Uh, uh, what has been the obstacle obstacle that you can give other any other tips on? As far as like really put, creating your music, getting out there, you know, marketing promotion. You know, tell tell everybody, you know, your process. Well, I know the two hardest things for me was coming out the gate, just making sure you invest in like in the right places. Cause you know, as an indie artist, you're really funding all of this. You want to make sure that your money's going in the right spot. But, I mean, I want to say I took a couple of L's. It's really just lessons that like I learned from. So, I mean just move that going forward and then also finding my sound it's like when you're from your area you want to make sure you have like your own sound like your own team that was mm -hmm. hard for me for a while because mm -hmm. i would just gravitate to um soundcloud and like youtube a lot which is nothing wrong with that cause right everybody don't have the funds or the front up for a producer but that was my problem for the longest like i was sounding like drake at one minute mm -hmm. j cole and i was like you know what i'm saying we like we want to hear blaze so I kind of right. like fell back and then try to just figure out my own sound. Okay. So those are the two hardest things for me, but it'll make you stronger at the end though. Okay. How did you how did you find your sound? How did you find Blaze sound? What what how, how long did it take you to find that sound? Um, it really it took me like a couple of years, like honestly, because mm -hmm. um what I would do was I like I snapped out, like I would listen to everything that came out at the time. My favorite artist dropped the album. I would like just play the hell out of that for a week and then you don't realize it but like subconsciously like when you start writing music after you listen to like a project after a while you'll start to sound like them so after a while I was just tuning everything got listening to other genres like whether it was like country or pop I was like let me just stay out of hip hop for a while that way I can just kind of like create my own sound okay. I didn't experiment with different beats like I finally got like like my sound and once he sent me like that magical pack, that's when I did NBA. I just kind of went in and just did my own thing. I think I took a break from listening to mainstream for like six months. And okay. Probably the best decision I ever made. Exactly. I, I think a lot of people, man, you listen to mainstream artists, it, it definitely can make you start, like you said, sounding like them, mm -hmm. what you really need to find your own sound. And even with Cyclone, we already have our own sound. You know what I'm saying? Every 
even Columbia, you know what I'm saying? Each part of Columbia has its own sound, you know what I'm saying? That's so, what yeah, yeah, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Even where I'm from, everybody got their own sound, everybody got their own flow. The beats they like to, you know, get on and, and ride, everybody got their own thing. I think that's one of the dopest things about South Carolina, man, we really, and North Carolina. Carolina's period. I tell you, as, as, as soon as we get in, like, it, it's over, man. Like, yeah. Both sides gonna eat, man. Yeah. So, for future releases and stuff, man, let, let's talk about features and collabs. Who who you want to see? Who do you want to get on the track with? So as far as like Carolinas, or just I mean, in anybody in general, man. As far as um the Carolinas, I would love to work with um Rennie. Okay. Like she just got signed and everything. I would love to like. I think we can make something dope. Okay. Um. Not sure if you're familiar with, uh, with the baby, baby Jesus. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I was, I was the baby hard man. Yeah, I was, I would love to work with him. As far as mainstream, um, Wale. Okay. I feel like he don't get the respect like he gets. Like if we make something dope, that I can bring everybody from Carolina on him. Um, J Cole, Frank Ocean, Miguel, and um, another. Um, North Carolina artist Jayway so so like I would love to work with him too. Okay, I think I heard I heard about yeah, him. Yeah, I say he's yeah. a, he he got that that crazy lingo up there. Everybody mm -hmm. everybody know who he is, but okay. that's definitely like for future projects. So okay, if it not hey man, that's, that's that's dope right there, you know man. Saying? So this is a dope couple of you know artists you name. You know I, I rock with all of them, man. So you know you definitely want to get that Rennie that Rennie joint, man. For yeah. for for the price go up, man. <laughs> for the price go yeah. up, yeah. So definitely, man. So um, let, let's let's talk about um, let, let's talk about um, shows. You got any upcoming shows? Oh yeah, um, we're gonna be in Blue and the Vista, I believe. It's the either the twentieth or the twenty second. Um, they got a showcase at Blue. Yeah. And it's gonna um, I know QC and CMG. Everybody gonna be in the building. We definitely gonna rock out in there. Mm -hmm. Um, we got a couple other shows coming up in North Carolina, Hip Hop Festival. That's gonna be in. June, June twenty second. And Raleigh. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Man, I might be seeing you a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, two events DME TV gonna be pulling up at, man. Then on uh, the Carolina uh, Music Awards, it's gonna be on the Charlotte in July. We're gonna be in there. Okay. A three C, like we definitely like aiming like towards a lot. Man, we can be seeing each other a lot then. Tell you, I'm, I'm gonna hit you up whenever like I'm at an event. You probably gonna be like, I'm down the street. I'm like, <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's all about, man. Networking, man. A lot of artists don't take take that seriously so i mean how do you go about networking or you like even if i'm not performing like mm -hmm. i'll definitely like just go there to show my support right like, either hand out flyers or cars like connect with like the dj or whatever like media is there like every connection like works man exactly if there's like five shows a week and you can just connect with like any and everybody there like that's at least about like 30 to 40 followers and you do that like consistently like you'll meet a lot of people that's real, man. Networking definitely is the key, and you can go a lot, lot, lot of places faster if you know how to network and come out and support. You know what I'm saying? Like even coming out, like you say, you go to other people's event if you're not performing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of artists miss that; they don't understand that. So definitely like glad you you mentioned that. That's that's because I, I was like that at first. I'm like, if I'm not performing, I'm not going. But then right. it's like you would see like whatever footage they got, and I was like, those look alive. Oh, I didn't know he was gonna be Tell there. What like, were your, who who influenced you? What were your influences in, in, in music, man? How you got started? Well, um, growing up, um, pops being from Brooklyn, he just like just played nothing but '90s like New York rap. So it was like as far as from like Run DMC to Wu Tang, Method and Red, Jay Z, Biggie, like I grew up like on all of that. Okay. So that, like I really appreciate that now because it's like I kind of like put that energy and lyricism in my music so but I would definitely say um who really like crafted my sound would be Jay Z, Kanye, you know, like college drop I was the first album on bus so mm -hmm. I kinda base like all uh, most of my music around him. He paved the way for a lot of artists like me, like just like a regular guy, you can just do you instead of like fitting into what the industry wants you to be, you can kinda just do your own thing. All right, all right. Tell me how you feel with that SC Top 20 lift. I know you've seen it. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely seen so it. I'm roar, I roar about that, so. I mean, honestly, it's like, I knew, like, a couple people off the list. I didn't know everybody. Right. It was probably, like, ignorant on my part, so, like, I did some research, and it's like, whoever was on that list, like, they got, like, a following, and it's like, people know them. They was talking. I know a lot of people were salty. I mean, mm -hmm. you just got to just keep working. Like, just get your, your, 
your game up. You know, you'll eventually be on that list. That's the way I took it. It was like not a slap in the face and made me want to go harder. So hopefully they can recognize me next time that poll comes around. Hopefully I'll be on there. Definitely, man. I know we're going to see you on this soon, man. I know you're going to grind it out. You know what I'm saying? But it was crazy the comments I seen on that list. It was like, oh, everybody's trash. I don't know any of them who makes the list. And I was like, that's the wrong way to look at it. That's why it's that crab in a barrel mentality. That's why we it's been so long for anybody to get on. Like, we just got to stick together. Yeah. That's true, man. I, I, I knew a lot of people in that list. Mm -hmm. and, and that's from different area codes. I seen, who, who did I recognize on there? Um, Young Neek, uh, Rennie, Mo, Frank De Niro, and those like a couple of other people. Those are the ones like I knew off top. So right. Like, the rest of them, I just researched. Man. Everybody got pretty, pretty dope music, man. Everybody got right. their own sound. Mm -hmm. So, like, who, who was one person that you research and, and find out how dope they were. Let's see if I'm pronouncing his name right. So, uh, Mr. Fab, I believe he was in the top five. Mr.? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. from he, Columbia. Yeah, some, um, some dope music. Yeah. There was um, a couple others I can't remember off the top, but I know he was, he definitely had some dope music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Definitely. He'd been doing it for a while, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, and uh, Cleve Mac too. I didn't, okay. I didn't recognize, um, I met him a couple of times at a few events, but I never knew what his name was, but it's like, he got some dope music too. Okay. See, um, he, he got this one joint on the radio, I think it's called Whip. I actually got Baby yeah. Jesus on, I was playing that on the way to die, so. Mm -hmm. and I shout out to Cleve, he got some dope music. Okay. That's what's up, man. But uh, man, for the people that need to get in contact with you, in contact with you for like features, collabs, or just want to check you out, mm -hmm. see, you know what I'm saying, what Blaze about, you know, check out his his current music, how can they do that? Oh yeah, um, all social media from Twitter, Facebook, IG, Snap, it's going to be it's underscore Joey underscore Blaze. Um, website is still under construction right now, but that should be out in a couple of weeks. It should be on joeyblaze.org. And um, Reverb Nation, I have a page, it's Joey Blaze, SoundCloud, it's Joey Blaze, so... You type that in, that should be the first one that come up. Okay. So like the number is going to be in there. You can hit my email. You know what I'm saying? I'm always down to work with any and everybody. Okay. How you feel about Cardi B, man? What you think about Cardi B? I, I, love, I love what she represents, you know what I'm saying, from her coming like from the mud, getting the ground up. I mean, but I say she do got some catchy records though. Like I like what she doing though. Right. I like what she doing. She bringing that fun energy back. So yeah, I ain't, I ain't knocking her. She doing that thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. And she just signed a, a management uh, deal with QC. So and QC loading up, yo. Like they trying to, they trying to take over. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be a scary year for them, man. Now, I don't think they trying. They they are taking over, man. And, and and did in a short period of time too, man. Short so, period of time. Just a couple of years, really, if you think about it. Right. Three, four years. So as soon as they come to the blue, I'm gonna be all in that year. I'm gonna be like, yo, I got yo, y'all already got Rennie, you know what I'm saying? Get two Columbia artists together, y'all take over, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be in there the whole time. Exactly. That's what's up, man. But you wanna give anybody shout outs, man? Oh yeah, um, shout out to uh face to face um records in Charlotte, that's what I'm rocking with right now. Shout out my man Kid Rich, uh, he's up here in Columbia, shout out to J Block. Shout out to everyone um, that's been a part of the movement and supporting all my fans. So appreciate all the love. Definitely got big and better things coming, man. Just stay tuned. All right. And hey, I appreciate you sliding through, man. Um, thanks, hey, been... thanks for having me, man. I know it's been a minute, man. Yeah, bro. Definitely love what you're doing, man. You're grinding out here, too. I hey, appreciate you, man. So if hey, we catch you in the future, you know what I'm saying, at these events, we gon' we can definitely link up, man, chop it up. That's what's up, man. They looking cause they never know what's in the duffel Way too much flex, not enough hustle Things are working out, I got it off the muscle Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle But now they looking cause they never know what's in the duffel